House in KG. Family Worship Center. Glorifying Christ and preaching him to be glorified. Welcome. Simame tukaweze kumkaribisha mchungaji wakati huu ni watu mkono wako mwambie bwana naomba unene na moyo wangu naomba unizungumzie mchana wa leo natamani bwana kusikia kila ambacho umeniwekea wiki hii sina nguvu sina uwezo ila tu nakutegemea bwana nisaidie kukupenda wiki hii kukutegemea zaidi na zaidi licha ya mambo ninayoyapitia mengine ni machungu mengine yanaumiza mengine ni ni, 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 ni ni magumu sana na shindo kuyatatua naomba bwana unisaidie kukutegemea na kukuangalia tu wewe na kuinua macho yangu milimani mahali msaada wangu unatoka nikumbushe bwana ya kwamba wewe ndiye mwanzo na mwisho wa imani yangu nisaidie kukuegemea na kukutegemea wakati wote katika jina la Yesu bwana ninakushukuru maana umelinda wa, watu hawa umelinda watumishi wako na bwana wiki nzima imepita milima na mabonde umetupitisha na sasa bwana tuko nyumbani mwako tutamani kulishwa na wewe tuomba utulishe tuomba mtumie mtungaji akalete mahusia yako tuko tayari kupokea kutoka kwako Asante kwa roho wako mtakatifu. Asante maana unaenda kutamala kimahali hapa. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini. Tuseme amen ya nguvu. Tunapomkaribisha mchungaji kwa makofi mazuri. Amen. 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 Tunaweza keti we can have our seats. It is good to na kila mmoja wetu tumefika katika ibada hii it is a big blessing bwana yetu asifiwe nashukuru kwa sababu ya bwana kuwalinda juma mzima kuwa pamoja nanyi last sunday tulikuwa na ibada ya watoto na tunashukuru walimu tunashukuru wazazi tunashukuru hata watoto kwa vile ambavyo walitudumia siku ya jumapili na tunasema mungu awabariki sana bwana yetu asifiwe Let us grow the next generation. Wacha tukuze kizazi ambacho kinakuja. Na tutakikuza intentionally. Tukitaka na tunaweza kukikuza, tukitaka na tunaweza poteza, tukitaka. But we decide that as for us and our children we will serve the Lord. Amen. Sisi na watoto wetu tutamtumikia Bwana kwa maana inafaa. Nashukuru. Nataka tu ni ingia katika neno la Bwana nimekuwa nikishiriki kuhusu uh, winning the battles of life kushinda vita za maisha kwa maana life is a battle whether you like it or not life is a battle one preacher said mubiri mmoja ambao namheshimu sana alisema amegundua he has discovered that god blesses those who struggle much bwana itosifiwe mungu anabariki wale ambao wanapitia mangumu sana na akapenda historia yake ya watu wengi and i could identify with ningeweza kutambua na yeye kwa maana hata mimi katika maisha yangu nili struggle na mambo mengi sana bwana itosifiwe Bwana wetu asifiwe because life is a battle life is a battle and those ambayo utapigana hizo vita na ukose kukata tamaa you will get what we call the spoils of the battle ama rewards of the battle juzi na i think the whole of this month kumekuwa na michezo mingi sana athletics ile olympic kuna world under 20 ile inaendelea siju kama imeisha ile inaendelea hapa kasarani na kuna olympics pia para ile inaitwa para olympics ya wale hawajiwezi katika njia moja inaendelea pia upande wa Japan eh? but when you see the person anayepata gold anakimbia wengine wanafikanga mwisho wanaanguka hapo anakuja kusaidiwa kwa maana amengangana amengangana but kuna reward in every battle there is a reward in every race there is a reward 
Bwana wetu asifiwe. Na kwa hivyo ni lazima tujue we have to fight these battles. Na leo nataka tu niongee kuhusu victory ama ama ushindi bila kupigana vita. How can we have victory without even fighting a battle? Bwana wetu asifiwe. Victory without a fight. Kupigana unapata tu ushindi hata hujaamka na kuanza kupigana but you already have a victory. Bwana aitwe asifiwe. Nataka kusoma andiko mrefu kidogo but we read it because I want you to understand the story. Vizuri kuelewa hadithi. Mimi huwa nataka usome maandiko ili uelewe hayo maandiko because it is the word of God that gives life. And the word God of God comes for our profit for our benefit neno la mungu linakujanga kwa kwa faida yetu ikuje kwa faida mtu mwingine for our profit ikiwa tutaichanganya na imani let's let's turn to second chronicles next second chronicles chapter 32 hii ni hadithi ya mfalme mmoja anaitwa hezekia na we will read it if you are there let's read bibi nasema after all that hezekia had so faithfully done baada ya mambo yote Ezekia alifanya kwa uaminifu sana sana karib king of Assyria came and invaded Judah he laid siege to the fortified cities thinking to conquer them for himself let's move on when Ezekia saw that sana karib had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem mstari wa tatu he consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city and they helped him they helped him ah uh-huh. they gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the streams that flowed through the land why should the kings of assyria come and find plenty of water they said mstari wa tano then he worked hard he worked hard preparing all the broken stones sections of the wall and building towers on it he built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of david he also made a large number of weapons and shields aha uh-huh. he appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the and encourage them with this word encourage them with this word be strong and courageous do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of assyria and the vast army with him for there is greater power with us than with them mustadi wa nane with him is only the arm of fresh but with us is the lord our god to help us and to fight our battles and the people gained confidence from what hezekiah the king of judah said uh huh later when sena sena karib king of assyria and all his forces were laying siege to Lachis he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message for Ezekiah king of Judah and for all the people of Judah who were there mstari wa 10 this is what Sennacherib king of Assyria said says on what are you basing your confidence that you remain in Jerusalem under siege aha uh-huh. when Ezekiah says The Lord our God will save us from the hand of the king of Assyria. He is misleading you to let you die of hunger and thirst. Uh-huh. Did not Ezekiel himself remove his gods, high places and altars, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship before one altar and burn sacrifices on it? Aha uh-huh. verse 13. Do you not know that I and my predecessors have done to all the people of the other lands where were the gods of those nations able to deliver them to deliver their land from my hand 
Mm -hmm. Who of all the gods of this nation that my predecessors destroyed has been able to save his people from me? How can, then can your God deliver you from my hand? Now do not let Ezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my predecessors. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Mr. Sita. Senna Karib's officers spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. Uh -huh. The king also wrote letters ridiculing the Lord, the God of Israel, and saying this against him, just as the gods of the people of the other land did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. Verse 18. Then they called out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to terrify them and make them afraid in order to capture the city. Uh -huh. They spoke about the God of Jerusalem as they did about the gods of other peoples of the world. The work of human hands. Uh -huh. King Ezekiel and the prophet and prophet, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. 21. And the Lord sent an angel who and he inherited all the fighting men and the commanders and officers of the camp of Assyrian king. So he withdrew to his own land in disgrace. And when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. Verse 22. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sena Kerib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others. He took care of them on every side. Verse 23 and the last one. Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and variable gifts for Hezekiah king of Judah. From then on, he was highly regarded by the all nation. May God bless his word this morning. Can we say amen to that? May God bless his word. This is the story of a king. A king that we know very well. Wengine to soma A king who destroyed the gods that watu walikuwa na abudu. Nakarudisha the true worship. If you go to chapter 31... It narrates in Ongea Vizuri, Vile Hezekiah as a king restored true worship. Akamuru watu, nakaweka wakuhani wasimame, kila nafasi yake, nakuambia watu wa muabudu mungu kulingana na vile Musa alikuwa meamurisha. Bwana ito sefiro. He was a king who was anointed to restore the confidence of God, the faithfulness of God. But listen to me. Hezekiah ata kama alikuwa meamua kurejesha kuabudu. The devil, the devil is usually not happy wakati tunapo mtumikia mungu. Anytime we decide to serve God, the devil is not happy. The devil uses many things. Na one of the things anatumia anatumia adui kupigana na wewe. I've come to tell you that kati ya vita mingi ambazo tunapigana, we don't need to fight some battles. We need just to sit down and wait and see God fighting for us. One night was a few. Romans chapter 12 verse 19. Bibiria inasema na mnagani. Warumi kumina mbili mustari wa kumina tisa. Inasema na mnagani. Let's read that. Inasema avide. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. Usikuwe wewe ndi unajirudishia kizazi. 
Kwa maana kuna watu watainuka kupigana na wewe. You don't need kujipigania. Mungu anajua kujilipishia kizazi chake. When people stand and start accusing the God that you believe in, you don't need to fight. God will fight for himself. Yule Mungu tunaye abidi um, amini na Mungu ambao tunaye abudu ni Mungu anajua kujipigania. Ni Mungu hahitaji kutetewa. Ni Mungu ambaye hahitaji ati watu wasimame wapiganie kinyume chake. He knows how to fight for himself. Na wakati sena karibu ambaye alikuwa kwa mfalme wa Asiria aliinuka na kwanza kutusi Mungu akisema huyu ni Mungu gani Kuna watu wanajua walikuja na nikapigana na miungu yao na miungu yao haikuwasaidia msisikize kile mfalme wenu anawaambia kwa maana hata huyu Mungu wenu hata wasaidia ikifika hapo mwewe jiweke kando Hezekiah alipofika hapo alijua yeye atasihitaji maofisas God will fight for himself. Bwana aitwa Sefiro. I've come to tell you we believe in a God who knows to fight. He knows how to fight. He knows how to fight for himself. He knows how to protect his people. He knows how. Anajua jinsi. Na wakati mwingine tuhitaji hata kuamka na kupigana, we don't need to stand and fight. God has fought for his people. Mungu amepigania watu wengi mali kwingi sana Mungu katika kitabu cha Second Chronicles 2 hiyo amepigania Jehoshaphat wafalme wengi katika kitabu cha Daniel alipigania Daniel Daniel alirushwa katika simba katika katika tundu la simba hangeweza kuwa wale simba but God fought for him because kuna wakati whereby when you follow what God has called you to do you don't need to stand and fight for yourself you wait and God fights for you Amen. I have seen that even in my life. I've seen that in my life. Nakumbuka kuna wakati mmoja mchungaji mmoja alinikujia miaka mingi iliyopita na kuna vitu zilikuwa zikiendelea. Na kaniambia pastor yes, hatuwezi kubali. Siku hiyo nilikuwa chairman wa wa wachungaji hapa. Hatuwezi kubali hizi vitu ziendelee namna hii. Akamwambia so what are you proposing? Akaniambia tusimame, tuende tugome kama wachungaji. Na tutokee kwa TV tuseme tunakata hiyo. Nikamwambia mimi I don't do that. Ikiwa huyu Mungu ninamwamini hawezi jipigania then tuachane na yeye. Bwana aitwa Sefio. If the God I serve cannot fight for himself, I must stand to fight for him. God knows how to fight for himself. Na kabisa according to my word, God fought for himself. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Mungu anajua kujipigania. Go Mungu sio wajuzi. Mungu ni wa kitambo. He has seen battles. Ameona vita. Ameona mambo makubwa. Ameona vitu vingine hata ambazo zinastua watu. But he knows how to fight for himself. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Na ndipo ndugu wetu katika mstari I think ni mstari wa 5 wa 6 akasema be strong and courageous. Huyu Mungu atasimama na atatupigania. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Mstari wa nane, mstari wa nane. Mstari wa nane unasema namna gani? Verse 8. Inasema namna gani? With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is our God to help us and to fight our battles. Kwa maana Mungu anapigana vita kwa niaba ya watu wake. Bwana wetu asifiwe. And I've come to tell you this morning kuna vita ambayo uhitaji kupigana you just need to wait to stand and see the salvation of God you stand and see ukisimama katika njia ya Bwana utaona Mungu akisimama na kupigania kuna mambo kadhaa ambayo yanakuja nataka nichukue muda huu sitaki kukaa sana kuna mambo kadhaa ambayo yanakuja katika hadithi hii ambayo yanaonekana yanaonekana how God fights God will fight for you only when you have some certain habits in your life bwana aitwa sifio tabia fulani zikiumbika ndani ya maisha yako hautahitaji kupigana vita vingine god will just fight for you kuna vitu mtu anafanyanga zina attract favor kuna vitu mtu anafanyanga zina attract victory kuna vitu mtu anafanyanga zina yani 
ni kwa sababu umezoea kuifanya unakuta ya kuwa always you are winning always you are overcoming always you are coming from one battle to another one in Jesus name kumana kuna vitu life is about habits life is about what you do kila ambacho unacho tena you can do habits ambazo zitaribu maisha yako you can do habits ambazo zitatengeneza na zitattract the favor of god in your life bwana wetu asifiwe some things come because of habits na that's why nimeongea sana wakati mwingine hapa nikasema mkristo anastahili kuwa na tabia fulani kuna tabia ambazo zinajulikana zako tabia ambazo zina attract the favor of god and the victory of god in your life kuna vitu kadhaa tunaona katika hadithi ya ndugu wetu Ezekia ambapo nataka ku point about four things that Ezekia had established as a as a as a, as a habit vitu zilikuwa continuous vitu ambazo zilikuwa zinaendelea katika maisha yake na zilifanya Mungu ampiganie wakati kulikuwa na vita haleluya there are things that Daniel did One of the things that Daniel did and I'll talk about it ni maombi alikuwa anaomba asubuhi saa saba na jioni na hata wakati alilushwa kwa shimbo ya sima because alikuwa na tabia fulani God delivered him He didn't need to fight the lions alikuta simba zimezimwa midomo yake na zimeshiba hazihitaji Daniel because kuna vitu ambazo when you do they attract victory in your life they are habits that attract victory a believer kuna kuna tabia ambayo mkristo akiifanya kwa kurudia rudia kwa kurudia rudia inakuwa lifestyle yake inaleta ushindi katika maisha yake when a war comes unakuta iko namna hiyo you don't need kuongana ili milango ifunguke mbele yako you need some habits Habits zingine ukiweka ndani yako unastukia mlango unafunguka mbele yako hata before ufungue mlango tu unafunguka favor comes before you because kuna vitu umezifanya zimekuwa sehemu ya maisha yako what we are missing in the church today ni tuna miss watu ambao wako na tabia ambazo zinalete ushindi katika maisha yao We are having believers who are coming on Sundays but hawana tabia ambazo zinaweza badilisha maisha yao na kultract Mungu awapiganie vita vyao. Hatuna hizo. One of the things that is very strong na tunaiona ya kwanza ni tunaiona katika nini? Kitaki katika mstari wa ngapi? Aha, Biblia inasema namna gani? Aha. He consulted. Tuanzia tu mstari wa kwanza. Mstari wa kwanza tu wenyewe. Una, unasema, Biblia inasema after that Ezekiel had done, after all that Ezekiel had done, after all that Ezekiel had so faithfully done. Baada ya mambo yote ambayo kwa uaminifu mfalme Ezekiel aliifanya adui akainuka. Bwana yetu asifiwe. Kuna vitu walifanya katika chapter that one na that is the restoration of worship Bwana wetu asifiwe na sio hiyo peke yake let's jump to verse what to verse four let's jump to verse four sitaki hiyo mambo mengi ama tuanze mstari wa 4 wa tatu mstari wa tatu mstari wa tatu inasema namna gani he consulted with with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city and they helped him Verse four, they gathered a large group of people blocked all the springs and streams. Mm-hmm. Why should the king of Assyria come and find plenty of land? They said. Then he worked hard. Then he worked hard repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. Bwana wetu asifiwe. One thing that is coming clear na ilikuwa katika the DNA ya ndugu wetu Hezekia ni kuwa he was committed to the Lord and his work. Bwana wetu asifiwe. A habit ambayo inafanya Mungu anapigania watu wake ni kuamua kuuwa na tabia ya kujitolea kwa Mungu na kazi yake. Commitment to God. Commitment to God. 
and commitment to his service. This is what need. Hezekiah hakufanya kazi ya Mungu na moyo nusu. Alifanya kazi ya Mungu na moyo wake wote. Aliamua akiamua ni kuharibu madhabahu ya kishetani alikuwa anaibomoa na moyo wake wote. Akiamua ni kurejesha ukuabudu kwa Mungu he was he did it with all of his heart. Akiamua ni kumtumikia Mungu na kumwabudu Mungu he did it with all his heart. Nowadays we have half-hearted people in the church. Watu ambao mkuu mmoja wameweka kanisani na mwingine wameweka nje. That's why hawaoni ushindi kabisa katika maisha yao. Because you are not fully committed to God. God demands. God demands. Na hii ndio amri moja alipeana. Na Yesu akakuja ka reinforce. Akasema love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind and everything in you. Commitment, total commitment. God loves commitment. When he finds someone who is committed to him, mtu ambaye amejitolea kumtumikia na kumtolee kujitolea kwa kazi ya Mungu, Mungu anapigania anga huyo mtu. God fights for that person. Bwana aitwa Sefiwe. Mungu apigani watu ambao wako nusu nusu. People who are half hearted, people who are joy, ha, wanakuja tu kanisani wakati wanajisikia watu wa feelings. Unajua siku hizi tunawashirika wa feelings wengi sana. Mtu ana move na feelings. Leo si leo anajisikia kuomba, leo anajisikia kutoa, leo anajisikia kwenda kanisani, mtu ni kujisikia, kujisikia, kujisikia not committed. Not committed. That's why unaona Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego Mungu aliwapigania kwa moto because walisema naijulikane kwako hatutaabudu Mungu mwingine ila Mungu ambaye tunamjua. When everybody was bowing down, kila mtu alipiga magoti kwa sababu ya sanamu. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refused. They were totally committed to God and to the service of God. And what happened? God fought for them. Mungu hupigania wale watu ambao wamejitolea wapendwa. In this last days God will fight for people who are committed to him. Watu ambao wamejitolea kabisa. Sio mtu ambaye amejichanganya. Unakuja kanisani na umejichanganya. Eh? Uko na miungu mingine? Eh? Utatishwa, utatishwa. Kama vile sana sana karibu alitisha watu aliwaambia aliambia zeke ambia watu ambia watu kuna watu walisema wako na miungu yao na ni walianguka kwa mikono yao lakini ezekiel alisema how ni yao mimi be strong and courageous we believe in a god that is powerful and great bwana wetu asifiwe commitment 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 brings many things to our life kumtumikia bwana usiwe tu kanisani usiwe intercessor jina kuwa intercessor na you do intercessory unajua kuna watu wanabeba anga majina ya, ya kitu fulani lakini wafanyi eh yeye anasema yeye ni intercessor lakini hakuna aombangi yeye ni mwimbaji na imbi yeye ni wa sijui what and what na afanyi hiyo be committed to what god has called you to do Be committed to it. Let the people know that you are committed to God. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Let the people know that you are committed. Exodus 23 verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25 nasema namna gani? Exodus. Worship the Lord your God. And his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Weka King James version. Weka King James version. Weka King James version inasema namna gani? King James version inasema aha. And you shall serve the Lord your God. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Na utamtumikia Mungu wako. And he will bless your food, your bread. Na tabariki mkate wako na maji yako. Na atatoa magonjwa katikati yenu. Bwana aitwa Sefiwa. 
When we are fully committed to God and to serving God, one thing God does, anabariki mukate wetu. Kile tunakula. Anabariki maji tunayakunyua. Bwana itu asifiwe. Na siyo kubariki tu hiyo maji, anaondoa magonjwa katikati yetu. Na vita ambazo zinakudeta kwa maisha yetu, anaziondoa na napigana on our behalf. Hallelujah. Because we are committed to him. Tunaona magonjwa, tunaona vitu vingi. Likuwa sababu watu wameza kulegea katika imani zao. May God restore our commitment in Jesus name. Mungu narejeshe kujitolea kwetu. Tuwe watu ambao wanajulikana kama watu wamejitolea mbele za Bwana. So kitu cha kwanza ambacho kilikuwa katika maisha ya Ezekiel na kili attract the victory of God in his life ni kuwa he was committed. He had a habit ya kuwa anything concerning God he is committed. Alikuwa number one. Kitu ya kumuhusu Mungu hapo anasabiwa mara mbili he was number one. He could do many things but when it comes to God he is committed there. Na hakuwa nafanya kazi ya Mungu na moyo nusu, alikuwa nafanya kazi ya Mungu na moyo wake wote. His all heart. If God has called you to do something, Mungu amekuita kwa imbaji, Mungu amekuita kwa huduma yoyote, Mungu amekuita katika uongozi. Do it with your heart. Do it wholly committedly. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Hata kama mtakutana watu wawili, wewe jua umefanya nafasi yako. Uko kwa cell group, go do it. Uko katika uimbaji, prison worship, nini? Kama ni saa mbili, kuwa hapa saa mbili. Do it with all your heart, serve God with all your heart. When it comes to battle, because when you serve God now, kama vile nilisema asubui, hatujui ni nini kinakuja next year. Nobody knew corona is coming in 2020. Everything was running well. Kila kitu likuwe naenda vizuri. All of a sudden, mambo ya kanza kubadilika. Even when Daniel was praying and seeking God, hakujua siku moja atatupo kwa shimo la nini? La simba. Lakini wakati ilifika, nyakuwa atatupo kwa shimo la simba. Because alikuwa na tabia ambayo ameweka ndanya mesha yake, God appeared. Mungu wakatokea. Akasema hula mejitolea, na nakokomitedi kwangu, he will not be touched by anything. We don't know three years to come what will happen. We don't know. We don't know next year about the election what will happen. But when we are committed to God and we are serving him, na iwe in our habit. We are not committed because God is giving us something. We are committed to God because he is God. And we want to serve him. Yeye ni mungu wetu. Yeye ndio kimbilio yetu. Yeye tunampenda na mwoyo wetu wote na nguvu zetu zote. Hatumpendi kwa sababu ya faida tunazo pata. Tunampenda kwa sababu yeye ndio mungu wetu. And we are serving him because he is God. Hallelujah. When you do that, na iwe sehemu yako, God will always be surprising you. He will be fighting. You will be having victory without even a fight. Unapata ushindi hata bila vita yote. The second thing that Hezekiah had established in his life ni kuwa he had established a belief system ya kuwa God cannot be defeated in his life. Amen. Bwana ito asifiwe. Hezekiah alikuwa meweka ndani ya kwake kuamini ya kuwa mungu huyu ni na muamini hawezi shindua. He had put that katika mstari wangapi? Mstari wa tano. Ni mstari wa saba ama ni wangapi? Wa saba, yes. Let's go to verse seven. Verse seven ni nasema namna gani? That you two verse seven. Be strong. Listen. Walipo sikia tikuna watu wanakuja mfalme wa Syria senakari ameamua kukuja kupigana na wana wa Israeli na aka ezekia kaita watu na kawambia be strong and Courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with them. Hallelujah. Musistuki na yale mambo ya naendelea kwa maana kuna nguvu mingi kwetu kuliko nguvu zao. 
There is greater power. Ezekiah had established a system in his life. Whether things are bad, whether things are good, he will believe in God. Bwana itwa sefiyo. Kuna wakati mwingine mambo yanakuanga mengi mpaka unashindwa kumwamini kama Mungu ataweza kukomboa kwa hiyo mambo. Mambo yanatoka left, ingine yanatoka right, ingine inatoka nyuma yako, ingine inatoka mbele yako mpaka unakosa kumwamini. Yes. Wewe ni mtu wa Mungu lakini unakosa kuamini. Will God actually save me from this? That is when you need a system. A belief system kuamini ndani ya maisha yako ambayo whether i doubt hata wakati tafika ya kuwa nina doubt god is still with me bwana wetu asifiwe hata kama ninapigwa vita gani mungu bado yuko pamoja nami yuko pamoja nami nilipia na mfano mmoja asubuhi ya the deputy president kuna maneno aliongea na akaniguza kidogo aliita ma bishops nakaita bishops na kawambia baka na nyinyi mabishops vitu zimekuwa kali baka ta nyinyi mabishop munastuka unakosa kuamini Mungu kama kuna kitu inaweza kuwa nzuri lakini sikizeni akasema sikizeni nikakuta mwanasiasa wa kwanza akihubiria mabishop sikizeni tuko na Mungu hakuna strong powerful word kama hiyo we have a god bwana aitwa sefiyo na hiyo ndio the same words that Hezekiah said akasema mstari wa saba mstari wa saba akasema namna gani akasema be strong and courageous kwenu wajasiri do not be afraid of corona do not be afraid hakuna makazi do not be afraid vitu zinaenda baya do not be afraid with the big army that the devil has for there is greater power with us kuna nguvu zaidi pamoja nasi. We have a greater power together with us. Verse 8 inasema namna gani? Verse 8 inasema namna gani? Aha, mstari wa 8 unasema namna gani? Aha. Verse 8. Aha. Hii kitu yao imekataa kusonga verse 8 inasema with him. Yes. With him. Sena karib. Ana trust nguvu za nyama. With him is only the arm of fresh. Ako na majeshi kubwa, ako na watu kubwa, ako na kikundi, ako na jeshi kubwa ambao linaweza pigana na watu wa Juda and a trust. But with us, lakini na sisi is the Lord our God. Ni Mungu wetu, ni Mungu wetu ambaye atatusaidia na atapigana vita vyetu. Bwana aitwa sifiwe. With them hao wanakuja na mwili kubwa. Hao wanakuja kama Goriathi. Goriathi alikuwa anatisha wana Israeli kwa sababu ya mwili wake. Akisimama hivi Biblia ilikuwa nasema anasimama several feet on top. Aki akisema mtoe mtu mmoja apigane, maana jeshi watu wa Israeli wanatoroka. Because he was big. Alikuwa na na na, na, na mkuki mkubwa. Alikuwa na panga kubwa akirusha hiyo panga hivi Biblia inasema it was weighing sijua how many kgs akikata hivi na kata karibu watu watano mara moja With them is the arm of fresh With them is the arm of fresh Kwa maana kuna vitu watu watakutisha watakutisha Kuna mtu unaweza muona hivi akiingia hapa na zile vitu wako anawatisha mnyamaza Hawezi ongea. Na hivyo ndivyo walifanywa. Na ndugu wetu akasema mimi nimeestablish a belief system siamini nguvu za mwili. Siamini nguvu za silaha. Yes, wanaweza kuwa na risasi. Sisi hatuna risasi, but our God can fight our battles. Bwana wetu asifiwe. Nimekuja kukuambia wapendwa, don't be shaken because of what you see people doing. Usistuliwe na kile watu unaona wanafanya na uone ni kana kwamba atakuja kukuangamiza you have a god who fights your battles tuna mungu anayepigana vita vyetu goriath alikuwa mkubwa kakijana kadogo tu kalitokea mahali hakajui vita kanaitwa daudi 
kama hatajui kushika mishale Biblia inasema kwanza alienda kapewa nini vitu za vita na nani na sol alijaribu kuvaa zikawa ni kubwa akasema mimi sijawahi pigana na hizi vitu na nikisema tena kupigana nazo i will lie to you akasema wachana na mimi enda na katishati kangu akavaa katishati kake na na na, 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 na tu sandals twake na kachukua ambayo ambayo nani Goliath alisema anamkujia na kamba na kumbe hiyo kamba yeye anajua akasema hapana mimi sikukujia na kamba wewe unatukujia na mkuki wewe unatukujia na kimwili kikubwa wewe unatukujia na vyombo vya kutisha wewe unatukujia na vitu ambazo zinashangaza na unatukana jina la Mungu wetu jina la Mungu wetu kama vile san, sana karebu alikuwa anatukana jina ya Mungu wezekeli unatukana mjina ya Mungu wetu mimi ninakukujia katika jina la Mungu wa Israeli ambayo unatusi huyo ndio ninakukujia naye sina mkuki niko na Yesu sina kitu kingine niko na Mungu sina jambo lingine i have my god who will fight my battles i have come to declare to you this morning we have a god who fights our battles tuna Mungu anayepigana vita vyetu hatuhitaji mikuki hatuhitaji nini hatuhitaji mambo mengi we have a god who fights our battles na ndiye akasema msiogope yeye anakuja na nguvu za mwi sisi tuko na Mungu wetu establish a belief in your system that god will always fight for you bwana wetu asifiwe establish a belief second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 inasema namna gani believe in god and believe in his prophet and you will prosper bwana wetu asifiwe amini mungu you will be established utadhibitishwa hautakuwa na wasiwasi a good belief system inafanya hatutetemeki hata wakati mambo yanaenda mbaya haisemekani katika maisha tutapata mambo mabaya we will have bad things but tutakuwa na msimamo bado kuna washirika kitu kitendeka kwa maisha yao hivi wanatoroka kanisa na wanatoroka Mungu wao bwana aitwa sifio kuna watu wanatishwa wanatishwa na watu wanatishwa na watu mtu ambaye anamuamini Mungu ako na msimamo katika maisha yake you have hata kama vitu zitishwa namna gani you are still standing that's why Shadrach Meshach and Abednego walikuwa na simama because they believed in God a good belief system inatuweka tunakuwa na udhabiti kwa maana vita zitakuwa mingi kuna wakati mwingine vita zitainuka utainukiwa na ndugu zako utainukiwa na dada zako utainukiwa na marafiki wako you need a good belief system to stand firm bwana aitwa sifiwe na ndio nasikia katika second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 Josephat aliambia wale wapendwa muaminini Mungu believe in God believe in God and you shall be established believe in his prophet and you will prosper bwana aitwa sifiwe kaambia listen to me Judah and the people of Jerusalem have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld see you upheld in ya ya constitution ile ya mabibi yae hii ni upheld ya kuestablishiwa bwana aitwa sifiwe si ile ilikuwa inaongea na majajes eh have faith in his prophets and you will be successful Amini watumishi wa Mungu na mtafanikiwa. We need to have a belief that establishes us. Bwana wetu asifiwe. We need to have a belief that establishes us. And the, kwa maana watu wengi kila ki adui anatumia sana sana. The devil uses words to discourage his people. Unaona ile barua iliyoandikwa na Senkara ilikuwa ku discourage watu. Ati wewe ni Mungu gani mnaamini? Muache kuamini Ezekiel kila aliwaambia. Muache kuamini pasta wenu kila anawaambia. Huyo Mungu hawezi wasaidia. The devil uses words to scare people. Nilipiana asubuhi kuna ka video kalikuwa kana kanaenda mahali ka watu sijui walikuwa ni ni sijui kama ni wamasaya manini I can't remember the story very well walikuja wakaiba mangombe wakaiba vitu mahali na wakasema kama mtu ako na shida 
Aseme. Na umeshika mikuki hivi. Mzee mmoja tu akatokea kwa hiyo kijiji. Akasema sisi hatuna shida. Sisi hatuna shida. Lakini ujue sisi ni wakamba. Eh. Sisi ni wakamba. Wamasai walienda wakachukua ngombe wakarudisha zote. Wakiwa na mikuki yake. Kwa maana alisema hatuna shida nyinyi endeni lakini mjue sisi ni wakamba. Eh. Sisi ni wakamba na tunajua kile. Sisi hata kuja na mikuki sisi ni wakamba. Lakini hizo ngombe mtarudisha tu. Hata kabla hawajamaliza na mikuki yao na nini walienda wakalete kwa maana ni wakamba ye wakamba ye wakitui ye chukweni. Hatutaki story what a powerful confidence is powerful bwana aitwe sifiwe unahitaji kusimama na msimamo wako na useme i believe in god na huyu mungu harogwi huyu mungu afanye jambo lolote huyu mungu anajua kutetea watu wake na hata asiponitetea nishaulieni siwachane na huyu mungu that is a belief system in us bwana aitwe sifiwe the that thing that Ezekiel had established ndani ya maisha yake ambayo ilikuwa ina attractive victory in his life ni kuwa Ezekiel had what we call consistent and continuous prayer prayer to a believer should be a lifestyle maombi ina style kuwa a lifestyle prayer should be a lifestyle verse what let's jump to verse what Verse 20 verse 20 nasema aha King Ezekiel and prophet Isaiah son of Amos cried out in prayer to heaven about this One habit ambayo itasaidia wakati ambapo amechanganyikiwa ni maombi We should not pray because we are in trouble we should pray because we love God Bwana itwa sifiwe We have a relationship with God Prayer should be a lifestyle in us. Hatujui ni nini kitatokea pale mbele yetu but when we pray God knows what will come in two years and he will deliver us from those things in Jesus name. Mimi kuna mambo niliombea 30 years ago. 30 years ago when I was in form 4 when I was in secondary school. Hiyo ni miaka 90 91. I think I cleared 91. Ni karibu 30 years ago ndio nilimaliza secondary. Wewe anaambia kijana yangu, I like talking to my son. Namwambia mimi nilimaliza 30 years. Lakini nataka nilimaliza 30 years resort zangu bado zinanifuatanga after 30 years. Because resort za mtu zinafuatanga yeye mpaka sa school ataenda chini. Eh? Yeah? Ukienda kwa nini? Unaambiwa resort yako ya KCSC ulipata ngapi? Kama ulipata E ni sawa. Itakufuata na itakufuata watoto wako watakuja kujua unless ufiche sana ulipatanga i na wajukuu wako pia watakuja kujua ulipatanga i hata ufiche tu sana lakini siku ile utaenda si watakuja kuangalia makaratasi angalia zini za babu hebu tuangalie ile makaratasi ya babu wakute makaratasi ya babu kumbe akwa na nyita kisungu <laughs> kisungu ilikuwa inaingia hapa inatokea wapi na ndiye alikuwa anatuambia tuongeane na kizungu. Na ndiye alikuwa anatuambia tufanye nini? Kumbe iko inajitika. Bwana yetu asifiwe. So kuna vitu I prayed when I was in still secondary school. I didn't know many years back ya kwa nitakuwa kuwa kuja kuwa kumchungaji. But I am seeing them right now because of my prayers. We need to establish a prayer pattern na maombi iwe a lifestyle maombi kwa mkristo ina style kuwa a lifestyle kama vile unaamka asubuhi kuna wale wanamkanga asubuhi wanakunywa uji kuna wale wanamkanga asubuhi wanakula gedheri mimi wakati mwingine namkanga asubuhi nakula mdhokoi mama nani anajua kupika mdhokoi vizuri sana namka asubuhi ninakuta kama mdhokoi kako hapo akiniwekea mandasi siwezi kula mandasi lakini mdhokoi ninakula because i love it wengine wanamkanga asubuhi unakunywa tulungi unafanya nini every morning there is something somebody does bwana it was a few that is your lifestyle that is what we call lifestyle 
Your lifestyle in a style kwa hivyo katika maombi. We don't pray because we have prayer items. We pray because we want a relationship with our God. Wakati mwingine mimi nakujanga hapa kwa hii kanisa ninaingia hapa na ninajifungia hapo na lala hapa namwambia Mungu leo nimeamua just to come and spend time with you. Tiati ni la maombi I just want to spend time with you because we don't know the next two years ni nini itatendeka. Daniel established a lifestyle in his life. Akasema asubuhi saa saba na jioni nitakuwa nikiomba. Hakujua siku moja atatupwa kwa shimo la simba na hiyo maombi itamuokoa. Hakujua. Bwana aitwa Sefiwe. People who pray wanakupatangwa na miujiza ya ushindi ambao wako wanatarajia. Amen. Wanastukia vitu zinatendeka in their life. People just come and start blessing you na ujui. Why? Because kuna tabia ya maombi. Siku hizi kumekuwa na lot of laziness kwa Kristo. Hawapati maombi. I thank God in this church. Kila asubuhi kuna watu hapa. Utakuta January, uwakute asubuhi. December utawakuta asubuhi. Next year asubuhi utawakuta bado wako because kuna kitu imenge, imekuwa part of their life. It is a habit. They enjoy it. They love it. Maombi ni kazi, but you can enjoy your work. Si ndio? Si kuna watu wana enjoy kufanya kazi zao. Una enjoy whatever you do. You can also enjoy prayer. You can be happy. Unaamka asubuhi unaomba. Do you know what you are doing? You are establishing a pattern of victory in your life. Nima nima una establish a pattern ya ushindi katika maisha yako. Na kama kuna kitu shetani anapiga nanga nayo sana katika Mkristo ni maombi. Anataka waskristo wasiombe. Wao walezi nawe na reasons. Na people will have reasons. People will have reasons. Utasikia oho mimi saa hiyo siwezi amuka. Oh ninapatanga kuna kahoma kana kujanga asubuhi asubuhi. Nikiamuka asubuhi kuomba kuna kahoma kana kujanga. Yes kama asubuhi kahoma kana kujanga jioni kahoma kana kujanga. Saa saba kahoma kana kujanga. Bwana aitwa sifiwe. Establish a lifestyle yako. Kuna muhubiri mmoja alikuwa anaitwa alikuwa anaitwa Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a professor alikuwa anafundisha university. He wrote what we call 95 thesis against the Catholic Church. Aliandika thesis 95. He was a professor. This was a learned guy. He used to study books na kufanya nini? He is the one who broke from Catholic kwa sababu kuna vitu hakukubaliana nayo. Wakati alianza kusikia ile kanisa kubwa ambayo inaitwa St Peter's ambayo iko Catholic iko Rome ilipokuwa ikijengwa hiyo miaka St Peter's haikujengwa jana ilijengwa kitambo sana where the pope stays right now hiyo St Peter's watu walikuwa naenda wanasema ukitoa pesa unapita purgatory kuna theory ya purgatory sitaongea kuhusu hiyo unapita purgatory unaingia mbinguni straight purgatory ni mbali watu wanakufa wanangojea hapo alafu naangaliwa mambo yako Hmm? kama father anakuombea vizuri anakuangalia lakini the bible says after death is after death is judgment no no place ya kuwekwa so martin luther was so much disturbed by these things na he wrote 95 theses against the practice of the catholic church na from there they cancer the protestants Whereby you don't need to buy heaven. Hawitaji kutoa pesa ili uingie mbinguni. It is by grace. In fact Martin Luther established justification by faith. We are not saved by works. We are saved by the grace of God. Bwana aitwa sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe. Sio kwa matendo ile unatenda mazuri. Ni kwa sababu ya neema za Mungu ndio tunaokolewa that is one of the theses that was established by the... Martin Luther was so busy akaandika in one of his books in Lisoma akaandika akasema i am so busy that i can't miss two hours with my god every day i am so busy alikuwa busy kiasi ya kwamba during lunch time 
mke wake alikuwa analipisha wanafunzi wakitaka kusikia kwa maana anasema this is the time for my husband to eat lunch hakuwa na time ya lunch alikuwa anaweka lunch na kona darasa na vitabu zimefunguliwa mke wake yako hapo naambia we ume, umeongea sana kula huyo mke alikuwa na kazi mke mume wake asianguke na njaa eh anauma anasema ana, anaendelea kufunza so alikuwa analipisha mke wake anasema amuwezi kuja kusikia bwana yangu wakati anastahili kula lunch na muna kuja tukufanya nini so Martin Luther he so busy hakuwa na time ya lunch hakuwa na time ya supper but he said i can't miss two hours with my god every day that is a lifestyle bwana yetu asifiwe ni kuamua hii ndio maisha yangu nitakuwa nikikaa this is the way i will be living prayer is part of me if i don't pray i feel like nime miss chakula nime miss kitu when you do that and prayer becomes part of your life when calamities are coming in the next two years god will give you victory over them bwana wetu asifiwe god will give you victory wakati corona size imefika number 4 Delta CG what? Corona phase 4. CG ni phase 4 ama nini? Delta. Hatujui kama itaenda phase 5, ienda phase 6, ienda phase 7, hata ikifika phase 10. Sisi hatustuki because we have a lifestyle with God. Kuna lifestyle. Mungu anajua mahali itafika and he will deliver you. Hallelujah. So Ezekiel knew the power of prayer. Wa Kristo ndio wajui ile silaha wako nayo. Kristo ndio wajui. But when you pray, things will come, but you will see the hand of God in it. I want to finish with this. I want to finish with this. The last thing is 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 sacrifice. Kutoa the bill. The bill. Kuwa na tabia ya giving in your life. Do you believe the same in the book of Exodus? Huh? Ukimwaga mkate yako kwa maji mengi haujui ni gani itamea. Eh? Be a giver. Mstari wa mwisho nasema namna gani? 20, 23 verse 23 nasema namna gani? Men brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts for Zechariah king of Judah. Bwana itasifiwe. Giving makes God remember. Makumbusho yako ingine inatokanga kwa sababu ya sadaka. Corneras Biblia inasema nimekumbuka sadaka unazotoa kwa watu sadaka unazotoa. Giving is a powerful tool. Giving is a it's not just part of worship. It is more than worship. Utoaji. Na utoaji ndio unakonga mgumu kwa watu wengi. Na mahali kuna konga na baraka ndio kuna pigangwa sana na utoaji umepigwa na watu wengi sana but you need to go to the word of god and see become faithful be faithful with your giving siku moja hiyo sadaka yako itakumbukwa bwana wetu asifiwe bwana wetu asifiwe in 2012 mimi na mke wangu we made a decision we did something ambao hakuna mtu alijua mimi na yeye na Mungu tu ndio alijua when we did that thing ndio baraka zetu zilifunguka that is the time niliitwa equity bank without knowing na nikakumbuka what i did bwana it was a few giving is hard sometimes but god remembers offerings Bwana itwa sifiwe. Mungu hukumbuka sadaka za watu wake. Huyu tu mmoja wakati alipatwa na magonjwa, is the same guy. Alipopatwa na magonjwa, huyo nabii walikuwa naomba naye anaitwa Isaya. Mungu akamtuma akamwambia na waambie Ezekiel ajiandae kwa maana anaku anakufa. Biblia inasema namna gani? Aligeuka kwa ukuta na akamwambia Bwana kumbuka zile vitu nitakufanyia. Remember God remembers things. One of the things he remembers anakumbukanga sadaka za watu wake. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Kuna watu wanaokolea wangu kwa maisha yao because of their continuous giving. 
You don't give because you have. You give because you love God. Na inakuwa part of your habit. You are not forced to give. And I thank God because he can say to me fika level kiasi ya kwamba you don't need to be told to give to utoe fungu lako la 10 ufanye nini. You don't need. God remembers them. He may remember them in your generation kwa watoto wako. Watoto wako. Wewe kwa maisha yako unaweza kosa kuona kitu lakini kwa watoto wako sadaka zako ziwasaidie. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Kwa mambo yako ukumbuke sadaka zako zianze kuwasaidia. There is power in giving. There is power in giving. There is power not only in giving, power of faithful giving. Kwa sababu kuna watu wanatuanga na msisimko. Leo nasikia roho ameingia natoa taidhi yake. Anaitoa. February roho ajaingia. Anangojia March roho ajaingia. Hiyo ni wakati wa Old Testament. Wakati wa Old Testament the Holy Spirit alikuwa anakujia watu in a season. Hakuwa anakuja vile anakuja. Saa hizi the Bible says the Holy Spirit stays in us. Amen. Anaishi ndani yetu. Eh? Wakati wa kitambo anaishi hivyo. We need to be consistent and faithful in our giving. Sadaka hizo zinafanya Mungu analete ushindi. Ushindi kwa maisha yetu. Ushindi ambapo pengine uko unatarajia. You start seeing things happening. I have seen that in this church, but I must speak it again. Bwana itwa sifiwe. I know we have very faithful people in this church. Tuna watu waminifu sana kwa hii kanisa. Kama kuna kanisa, hata wakati makanisa ilikuwa imefungwa, kuna watu they were still faithful wanasema kanisa zimefungwa but wanatuma tithe zao na offering zao. Kuna wengine walikuwa wananipiga wananiambia pastor yes. Mimi sadaka yangu kila Jumapili nataka kutoa. Nitaitoa aje. Ninamuonyesha jinsi ya kutoa na inaitoa. That is a faithfulness. God honors a faithfulness. Listen to me. Your things may look like lakini kumbuka God honors faithfulness. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Mungu anaheshimu wale watu wako waaminifu. Wale watu wako waaminifu. Hakuna mtu anaweza kuwa mwaminifu. One of the people ni Cornelius. Nimeongea kuhusu yeye. Akamwambia sadaka zako zimekuja kama kumbukumbu, kama manuka ma, mafuta manukato mazuri. Na nimekumbuka maombi yako. Nimekumbuka sadaka zako. Nimekumbuka kazi ambayo umejitolea. What will God remember? Mungu atakumbuka nini? What can God remember about you? Establish a habit. A habit in your life. A habit in your life ya utoaji. And you will see victory in Jesus name. You will see victory in Jesus name. Let's stand and pray. Tusiwe mimi na tuombe. Biblia inasema Hezekia hakuhitaji kupigana. Mungu alituma malaika. Mungu alituma malaika. Wakaua wanajeshi wa Assyria. Aliamka siku moja akakuta wanajeshi wake wale alikuwa anajidai nayo because nguvu zinaishanga wakati mwingine. Kuna siku moja Samson alifikiria ako bado na ile nguvu. Akaambiwa na Delilah Samson wa Filisti wamekuja kujaribu Biblia inasema he tried as he used to do akajaribu kufanya kwa maana alijua nikiamka tu hivi ninashikanga ma gates ninainuka nayo eh yeah? ninainuka na gates namna hii aliamka hivi kujaribu kushanya nguvu hivi hakuna because nguvu inaishanga siku moja Mungu akatuma malaika wake sena karibu mfalme wa siri kuenda akakuta hana jeshi they are all smitten and killed by the angel when it was a fear bibi nasema and the lord sent an angel who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders and officers of the camp of the assyrian king what wa kauliwa yeye so he with the dream to his own land with the disgrace akatoroka naibu kwa maana alikuwa anasema ni Mungu gani huyu ataweza wasaidia? Sasa hizi ni aibu kwa maana Mungu wa Ezekiel ameamka kupigania Ezekiel. 
Akatoroka na aibu na Biblia inasema alipoingia kwa kanisa lake kumbe alikuwa anaenda kuabudu Mungu kuna miungu alikuwa anaenda kuabudu alipoingia alikuta watoto wa damu yake watoto amezaa wamemgojea na panga namna hii wakamwambia wewe sen karebu wewe ni baba yetu lakini tumekungojea Biblia inasema his own flesh and blood cut him down with a sword wakamkatakata na kisu because god of ezekiel stood up to fight for his people when god stands to fight for his people hata anaweza tumia watoto wa watoto wao wa wauwe wenyewe he can use his own people to destroy that god is not a joke he doesn't joke with the people who trust in him wale watu ambao wamejitolea kumtumikia kumpenda na kumtumikia wale watu ambao wameona lifestyle ya maombi wanaongea na Mungu kila saa wanatafuta uso wa Bwana wale watu ambao wako na tabia ya utoaji kazi ya Bwana inahitaji hii anatoa na anasaidia na anafanya hivyo hao watu ni atati na usicheze nao hao watu usicheze nao Bwana wetu asifiwe hao watu usicheze nao Bwana wetu asifiwe how watu usicheze nao you can be killed because of those people that's why mimi hata kama mtumishi wa Mungu hata mtu akinikosea i don't speak any word i know my words are very powerful i have seen it i have seen it i have seen it working i have seen people destroyed na sio kwa sababu kifurani ni kusimama tu na kusema jambo fulani kuhusu mimi. Eh? Huyo mnasema huyo ni pasta huyo. Huyo 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 ako namna hii na namna hii. Mambo yake yote inaharibika na mimi sisemi jambo. Don't choke with men who have four things in their lives. People who are committed to God and they are committed to serve God, don't joke with them. People who have a belief system that they are with God, don't joke with them. People who are habit ya maombi asu, wanatafuta uso wa Bwana usiku na mchana don't joke with them people who are having a habit ya kutoa ili wafanye kazi ya Bwana na wako nini don't joke with them those are dangerous people sen kareb alicheza na hezekia akifikiri anacheza na wafalme wala wa kawaida akakuta amekanyanga moto ambaye kanyangangwi amekanyanga line ambayo ikanyangangwi aliangalia hivi akakuta jeshi lake lote aliyokuwa na jidai nayo imeuliwa akasema wacha nitoroke kwa sababu ya aibu niende nyumbani na niende niombe Mungu kumbe kuna kuomba Mungu kukuta kwa Mungu anakuta watoto wake wale wamemzaa wamemgojea na panga hivi should protect you are your kids to protect you or to destroy you they are supposed to protect you lakini aliwakuta amemgojea na pa na biblia inasema they cut him down bwana aitwe sifiwe they cut him down with a sword wakamkatakata na panga wa nini alicheza na mungu hacheze yangu We have a God who knows to revenge for himself. Amen. Bwana itwa sifiwe. Sometimes we don't need to stand and revenge for ourselves. We have a God who knows how to revenge for himself. Just lift up your hand and let's worship this God. Father, we worship you. We honor your name. You are mighty, you are powerful, you are full of grace, you are full of power. Tunakuabudu, tunakuinua. Saidia kanisa lako bwana liweze kujitolea nyakati hizi za mwisho. Saidia kanisa lako lisitegemee nguvu ya damu na mwili bali tukutegemee wewe. We lift our eyes to you this morning. Even as a church we lift our eyes to you. You are the God who fights for us. Tuna vita vingi lakini wewe ni Mungu unayetupigania. Fight for your people fight pigana kwa sababu ya wamama hawa pigana kwa sababu ya wazee hawa pigana kwa sababu ya vijana hawa give your people victory in jesus name peana ushindi kwa watu wako katika jina la yesu 
Oh, we love you and we worship. We love you and we honor your name. Thank you for your victory. Asante kwa maana unapeana ushindi. I declare victory over your people in Jesus name. Wengine tuna vita kwa makazi zetu. Wengine tuna vita kwa biashara zetu. Wengine tuna vita kwa jamii zetu. I declare victory over them in Jesus name. Natangaza ushindi katika jina la Yesu. Victory in Jesus name. Wape ushindi. Futa machozi yao na wenue tena. Make us be men and women who trust in you. Men and women who believe in you. Men and women who are committed to you. Men and women who seek your face continuously. Men and women who love giving. Who love offerings before you the Lord. Give us that heart. Kwa tukufu wa jina lako. Naombea kanisa lako libariki. Naombea wamaba wazee na vijana. Bless them and fight their battles. Wale wagonjwa waponye katika jina la Yesu. Wale wagonjwa waponye Bwana. Wale ambao hawani milango na fukuka fukua milango mbele za. Give them victory over the evil one. Give them victory over the evil one. Katika jina la Baba na la Mwana Roho Mtakatifu, nimeomba na kubariki watu wako. Can we shout amen? Can we shout amen? Join us on our social media platforms, Facebook page and YouTube channel as Housing KG. God bless you.